How are you, buddy? Saw Eric say something about political things. I don't think there's going to be any. I think Mike Hill's at home injecting disinfectant like he's leading to do. So we're all right. Mike Hill's going to keep his mouth closed tonight, I promise you. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope you're well. Um, tonight we're gonna, we've got a fun one. It's, uh, it's just all gear. It's gear night. Um, we're going to go over. Look, nothing's off limits. If you've got questions, you've got complaints you've got anything about gear this is for all of us to learn you know i mean i've been guiding 21 years and i learn all the time how are you joe kevin what's up buddy 
So I'm always learning. Um, if we stop learning, we stop catching as many fish. It's that simple. So if you've got something to say, let's say get everybody in on the discussion tonight. Um, I don't know how many we've got on YouTube. Let me check. Oh, yeah, we've got some people on YouTube as well. We're ready to rock and roll. So tonight we're not going to do the normal sit-down tying uh, thing we've been doing. There's nothing to tie. There's too much gear to go over. So let me get rolling on it. All right. First off, um, I can't thank you guys enough and gals enough for being here. I mean, some of you have been in every night, uh, you know, watching what we're doing, asking questions. I've picked all sorts of winners. Um, I'll be announcing those tomorrow on our Facebook page. And surprise, surprise, it's asking a lot of questions. So, um, so. Um, average law of averages were up. So I will be doing that again tonight though. So ask questions. Your name will be entered in a drawing. I've got some cool stuff for being here again tonight and spending the night with me and give me somebody to talk to about fishing because my wife and kids are tired of it. So whatever Craig Meyer out. So we'll see. Um, here we go. So I'll give you a quick background, a little bit about me and my family and and, and what we've done uh, and what turned me on to fishing. And that is uh, here, my two of my cousins, our whole family grew up pike fishing. I've got a bunch of kids in here at the end. Um, kids are the fifth generation to uh, my great grandfather was actually killed. We're, my son is a, and daughters are fifth generation. Just what I grew up doing. I grew up fishing. Um, I became addicted to fishing by the time I was 20. That's all I wanted to do. I tried so badly to just start guiding. Luckily, somebody talked me out. I grew up on the Yellow River, which is this picture here at my dad's place. Because um, my dad was addicted to bike fishing. That's why he bought a place on the Yellow. So, you know. My main goal at, during college was to try to figure out how to spend every day on the river. And I knew teaching in a classroom, a traditional classroom anyway, wasn't the way to do it. Um, I had no idea how quickly it would take off. Um, I had no idea that by 2002, we'd have five guides. And by 2000, it was, uh, it was just unbelievable how quickly it took off. Kind of northern, north central Indiana and southwest Michigan, um, that's kind of our, our area. Guy the St. Joe, yellow uh, for Jake guiding. Um, we still talk about how lucky we are to be. Just how uh, it's really not something to take for granted. We're lucky to get out on the river when we can. Um, so we guide these beautiful rivers. You know, we do Webster Lake and uh, we do the tip of canoe for pike. Do the yellow. This is my dad's place. If any of you love to camp, let me know. We'll get you camping out at my dad's place. It's an awesome place on the yellow. Um, you know, and Jake and I both were lucky to go out to Montana for years and years and guide. Uh, the Yellowstone, which is probably both of our favorite in the West. And uh, then we did pack trips up to Slough Creek, upper uh, Yellowstone Park for years. You know, this is our brains. This is what's in it. We both had MRIs this week. This is what it is. Um, it's all we think about. It's all we talk about half the time is fish. And we're so lucky to have great clients and good people like you that uh, enjoy doing what we enjoy doing, and, and that is catching fish and having fun on the water. Um, you know, I've said one thing a, a lot this year in all my seminars, not anyway, um, is this. Uh, enjoy the process, not the process. That is a putting a fish in the net and giving a high five. In this picture, um, Bill, the fish. he truly enjoys the process, not just really concentrate on jo enjoying the process. You'll never have a bad day on the river. But if you're only concentrating on the product, on here knows you're going to have plenty of bad days in the river. Chasing the product, chase the process, and sometimes the process 
Um, never thought that all these years later, truly best friends in the world, guiding. And and the reality is I bumped into Jake Butler on accident in Montana in a parking lot of a fly shop, and we struck up a conversation and a relationship that's lasted, uh, well, since 2000, I think it was, that we met Jake, and maybe nine. So it's been a, it's been a lot of with me. Um, my clients, our clients are very lucky. Uh, as their guide, and down here right now, not having Jake to talk to every night about fishing, because that's typically what we do every night is talk fishing, and have Jake on board with us, and, and have been for 20 years. So, all right, let's get into the swing of things. I can't show this slide without telling the story. Uh, Jake knows the story, but. Roger Myers, and Roger has fished with me more than anybody else in the world, including my family. Um, Roger and I have fished together, I don't know how many hundreds of times, but it's been a lot. And what Roger's doing here, this must be November, he had a tradition, our last trip of the year, uh, Roger did the rope. No matter if the D was fishing poorly, we did the Roger did the rope swing. Roger never got wet during doing the rope swing. I remember I did the rope swing once, and one of his buddies took the oars and said, yeah, I can row. Well, he row all right. He left me hanging by that rope swing for about what felt like an hour. It was probably only five minutes, but it was five minutes. I can promise you that. My arms were just burning, hanging on that rope swing, waiting for him to come up with that boat again before I dropped into that nine-foot pool. Luckily, he was able to get that boat up, but, and I didn't get wet. Jake, however, one time, it was late November. It was a misty, cold day. Jake said, hey, check this out. Make sure you have got the video camera running. And I don't have the video, Jake, so you can rest. I don't know where it's at. But Jake did the rope swing, got full air, and just dove right in. Things are steelhead. This is a 35-inch steelhead from this spring. This is probably going to go down as the biggest of the year. Uh, I should say of the spring. Uh, I would bet that will probably go down as the biggest this spring. So, giant. So it doesn't matter what we're fishing. Um, but some of the small things are the most important. So some of the boats we're using, well, really, the, the boats we're using. we got three different types of boats, and all this depends on what river we're on. Drift boats by hide. Both Jake and I roll hide drift boats and have for myself 21 years and Jake 20 years. We've never rode a different drift boat. Let me rephrase that. Both of us have rode plenty of drift boats. Neither of us has spent our money on a different drift boat. Hyde, in my opinion, in Jake's opinion, is the best drift boat known to man. Uh, Smith Fly Raft um, out of uh, Dayton, Ohio. There are a lot of raft companies out there for the money. I don't think you can beat a Smith Fly. And then my uh, big jet, my Landau, um, which we can put seats in. We can take seats out. Uh, it's got all the fancy gear and electronics, which I don't use very often. I call my GPS the $1,000 thermometer. That's pretty much it. It gets, gets more use as a thermometer than it really does anything else. What water we're on and what we're fishing for. All right, rods that we're fishing right now. Well, let's back up. We've been with Loomis. And again, if you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Let's open this up for major discussion. We've been with Loomis for all but about six months of our 21 years of guiding. Uh, we switched to a... Scott, I'll just go ahead and say it, we, uh, this is what it's about, is sharing. Uh, we switched to Scott for six months, and we broke every rod we had in six months. And Scott charged us for every rod we sent in in those six months. And literally, we broke every rod we own. Um, Loomis is a phenomenal rod company. I don't think that we've broken a rod. I don't think we've broken a rod in over a year now. Um we don't break rods, and when we do, Loomis takes care of us. They're very easy. Um, so Loomis is what we've been with other than six months for the last 21 years, and I don't see myself switching to, off of Loomis ever. Um, but we will talk about some other rod companies coming up. So nine-foot, five-weight, that's what we're using for smallmouth uh, trout. Um, we will use the nine-fives even for gar sometimes. Uh, nine-foot, eight-weight in that IMX Pro Series. 
is what we use for uh, steelhead and salmon. Sometimes we've got other rods we use for steelhead and salmon too. But the IMX Pro by Loomis is our number one go-to single-handed rod for smallmouth trout and steelhead and salmon. All right, the IMX Pro 11 foot. Tyler, I'll answer that in just a second. Um, the IMX Pro 11 foot 11 seven weight is our switch rod and Jake's long spay rod. So here is the beauty of these 11 11s. Our old switch and, our old switch rods were 11 foot eight weights, and they were they're, they're great switch rods. We used the uh, the Roaring River from uh, from Loomis. They're beautiful rods. But they would not turn over a 15-foot section of sink tip and a 4-inch fly very easily. Um, they were great on the smaller rivers. They could throw a 10-foot tip perfectly. But when we got out on the Joe and we wanted to throw a 15-foot sink tip, the 11-foot 8-weight Roaring River just wouldn't do it. These 11-11s will turn over a 15-foot sink tip with no problem, and they're short enough that we can take them in the Dwajak and use them. So no longer... Is it necessary? Is it is it uh, absolutely you know something we have to do? And that's that we don't have to have a spay rod anymore and a switch rod. We can use these 11, 11, sevens, and it covers the Joe and it covers the Dwajak. So there's no time anymore that we have to have a spay rod, a 13 footer, and we have to have a switch rod. This 11, 11, seven covers all of it. Um, if you're buying one rod for salmon steelhead. Um, unless you're going to use it for pike, this is the rod I'd buy because we can spade cast with this rod. We can high stick nymph fish with this rod. We can indicator fish with this rod. And you can throw a bass bug with this rod with no problem at all. Um, stripping a big pike fly and throwing it, I'll be honest, I haven't done it a whole lot. I have done it some, and it's kind of a pain in the butt with a two-handed uh, switch rod. Um, but everything else other than big pike flies, I've got no problem doing it with this rod. Uh, how do I feel about Orvis rods? Um, I assume you mean rods anyway, Tyler, because we're going to talk about Orvis, a few things Orvis here in a little bit. Um, I, if you'd asked me that 15 years ago, I would have said they were awful. Um, but Orvis has a new rod designer and has really put new uh, technology into their rods, and their new rods are wonderful. I, I like Orvis rods a lot. Um, I do like this. The Loomis is better, but I like Loomis better than about everything. Let me Let me back up. As I say that, it reminded me I forgot to mention this. Look, I think almost all rod companies nowadays, nowadays have a nine foot, whatever, five weight, seven weight, six weight, four weight, whatever you want to call it. All rod companies make a good safety rod. They all do. I can find a rod in every company's line that I love. I think what Loomis excels at and blows everybody else out of the water are their specialty rods. And one of those specialty rods is this. They're, they're spay and switch rods. They blow everyone else out of the water, in my opinion. And I've cast a ton of them. I'm not going to say I've cast all of them, but I have cast a ton of them. Um, I think everybody makes a good single-handed rod, including Loomis. But I think where Loomis excels are those specialty rods, like a switch and spay rod, or like our musky and pike rods, the short sticks. Seven and a half foot, nine, ten weight, although this one's a 10, 11 on the image. But seven and a half foot, nine, ten weight is what we use for pike and musky. Um, they don't make these rods anymore, and they're tough to find on eBay. But if you can get your hands on one, uh, they are a phenomenal rod. So that's our pike and musky rod, seven and a half foot, nine, ten weight, Pro 4X short stick, those are called. All right, a couple of rod companies. Um, Tom asked you, smallmouth fish with a switch rod? No, I don't. Um, we use single-handed rods, Tom. I don't see. So the way we fish on the Joe is from a boat. I can get the boat close enough to the bank that I don't need the extra reach of the switch rod. A Skagit head or a Scandi head out is just a little more, a little more difficult than working out a, you know, regular floating fly line, weight forward. Um, I've had people do it, and I'm going to be honest with you, from the boat on the Joe too far away to um, get the get the Skagit head to cast, and you end up missing a bunch of fish. The casts are sloppy. If you're stuck waiting for smallmouth on a big river, then absolutely, a switch rod's a great tool, but we're not typically waiting on a big river. 
So no, I don't use switch rods. Uh, Denton Morris asks uh, those seven foot, seven and a half foot nine weight rods. Do they load up deep in the rod or mostly from the tip? How easy is it to transition from a slow three weight to one of those beasts? Can they even roll cast? All right. So, um, so they are they are fairly fast action rods. But you've got to remember we're throwing a very heavy line, and we're throwing a very large fly. So they load up very well. Three weight to one of those rods. You know, casting is casting. Um, and, and, you know, and every fly you throw on a rod makes that rod. Three weight glass rod like this one here? No. Um, you're going to have to change your cast. As far as roll casting goes, yes, the roll cast without a fly on them. Um, we don't roll cast for pike and musky. They're just, they will not roll cast a, any pike and musky fly, nor do I want them to. That's not that's really not what I'm looking for them to do. But it, I haven't found any rod that will roll cast a pike and musky fly very well. They're just too heavy. Um, for those you know, 9, 10 weights, it's going to change the cast, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it's... Going from this rod to a five weight is going to change the cast. So, um, you know, you just kind of have to change your cast depending on what rod you're using. Here, talk about some other individual rods that we love. Uh, Echo glass. This year I was on a mission. I wanted to buy a new glass rod. You bet, buddy. Denton said, laugh out loud. Thanks, great info. Um, buddy, but yeah, nothing's going to roll cast one of those giant pipes. Very well. Even on a small river. Glass rod, and I cast a ton of glass rods. It shows this. Funny, I didn't think anything outcast this echo. God, it's beautiful. Um, or it might be ugly to you. It's one or the other. It's like black licor licorice. You either love it or you hate it. But to me, for the money, rod, I, I couldn't find anything that was that was even close. Glass rod, they all cast a little differently. You guys want prices on stuff? I wrote down kind of retail. I forgot to start mentioning that at the beginning. No, I won't. I'm just joking. Um, retails are like $250. Uh, it, 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 I love it. I love that rod. Uh, another rod that I truly adore and have for years is the Sage Light Line. I'm not a big Sage fan. I'll be honest with you. I feel like a lot of the rods are just responsive a little too fast for me can't really feel anything in them but the light line man i love that rod series um just a beautiful casting rod and actually i don't know i imagine eric robleski's on here if any of you are looking for a light line eric has a seven foot nine inch two weight uh that he's willing to part with and now i'm telling you the light line is one of my favorite series um of rods love it Bob Charles asked, advantage of glass. Um, <laughs> they're fun. I don't think as far as casting goes, I mean, it's a very slow cast. Um, it's a light cast. You're not, you're not going to throw giant flies, uh, uh, you know, as well or as long, I guess. But um, I would say it's just a different style of cast, a different feel of cast. I wouldn't say there's an advantage. Um, but I wouldn't say there's an advantage to graphite over glass, even though we thought there was for 25, 30 years. Um, it's just a different feel of the, of the cast and a different feel when you're fighting the fish. Um, but I wouldn't say there's advantage, and I wouldn't say there's a disadvantage. I'll, I'll tell you one advantage, Bob, of, of glass. Uh, you try to break a glass rod, it's probably not happening. That's one advantage to glass. It, you just don't break those rods. Um, so, yeah, that's one advantage. But this, uh, this light line from Sage is a phenomenal trout rod. Absolutely love those rods. Um, look, if you're looking for... An economical rod that casts very well, and you won't be disappointed with the amount of money you spend. And get a hold of Wolf. Um, Wolf Rod Company's out of, uh, I don't know if he's in Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky. Dave, if you're on here, I'm sure you can tell me where you live. But uh, Dave Huff owns this company, and uh, I, you will not be disappointed for what you're getting at the price. I can promise you that. I don't think Dave has a rod over about $150. And they are a very, very, very great, just an awesome rod, especially when you consider the price point. So get a hold of Dave. If you're looking just to get into it or you're looking for a backup rod or you know, a rod for one of your kids, which we'll talk about later, um, call Dave and you know, 
mean, you could spend just a little amount of money and get a really nice rod, um, nice rod tube. I mean, he doesn't cut any corners for the price. He really doesn't. Eric Robleski says glass has more soul. Yeah, I, it, it. Look, when you're fighting a fish on glass, it's a cool feeling. My very first fly rod ever was glass, and I, it's just a cool feeling. And they're a very slow rod. It's a very slow cast. Um, you know, Denton asked about bending down into the butt. They, they've been down into the real seat. Um, yeah, I mean, glass is a cool, it's just a cool uh, material to build rods with and to fish. Um, if you're looking to save some money, you're looking to get into it for the first time or get somebody into it, you know, give it, give a gift to fly fishing, get a hold of Dave. Uh, he makes a really economical rod. They're awesome. And I'll tell you, the graphics on them are beautiful. He has beautiful colors. Um, he makes a glass rod too that will save you a lot of money. Oh, all right, reels. We use two different reel companies. We use Lampson and we use Spaco. These are obviously our Lampsons. Um, we use the Remix. Bob Charles says, my first rod from 60s was a Fenwick glass. Still have it. Grass cutting. Nice. Nice. Bob says he spent his grass cutting money on his first rod. That's awesome. My first glass, uh, rod was also a Fenwick, Bob. Um, yeah, that was my first one. I still got it in the garage. I don't get rid of rods too often, at least ones that are sentimental. Um, so back to our reels. Our reels are remixes. So this reel retails for like $199. Uh, it's a machined cage and a uh, cast spool. You can get an all cast for under $100. Um, and, yeah, that's what we're talking about right now. John John asked about the lamps and liquid. So is the step below the remix and the Three mix. It's a cast spool. It's the exact same spool. It's just a cage. The Lampson remix has a cast cage. The difference between cast and machine, uh, cast is not maybe as durable, but if you're not playing around in a boat, you're probably not going to have any issues. A cast reel, the finish on them maybe isn't going to hold up quite as long. Um, but if you take care of your stuff and you keep it in a case, uh, I cast reels will last you a long time. I wouldn't worry about it. Here, whether you buy the liquid and the guru on up, it's all the same great drag system. So to answer your question, what do I think about the liquid? I think it's a phenomenal reel, um, especially at that price point. I don't think you can find – look, we've been with Lamson. We've been ten, And other than switching back to liquid, was the best thing we've ever done. Um, Ten years of using these reels, and Jake and I, we, we're catching big fish that make long runs, and we're fishing. We're dropping reels in the water. I mean, they're not they're not the hard, easiest. In ten years, between Jake and I, we have only had to ever send back one reel for repair. That reel was back to me within. I would sell a Lampson reel to anybody. They're great reels. Really good drag, really good customer. They hold up. Well, that's why we love Lampson. Um, Spaco. So our switch and spay rods, when we're swinging streamers, we're using Spaco reels. Um, Tim, who I talked with today, and I was supposed to call back this afternoon, call you after this. Um, Spaco we use on our... Spay, uh, spay and switch reels when we're swinging over the Lampson is these are a click pawl drag. So what we get out of these Spacos is a very, very low, almost zero startup on the drag. So when the fish eats, that reel handle starts spinning. There's no initial kind of tug of the drag. That initial tug of a typical conical or, or disc drag system on a traditional spay, uh, uh, spy reel that initial startup causes a little rippage in that fish. So what we've switched all of our stuff over to is Spaco and their click pawl drags, and we tend not to lose as many fish. Um, plus, you can get a reel with Jerry Garcia on it. I mean, you can get a reel with your kids' pictures on it. You can get a reel in red, white, and blue. Go over to Spaco's Instagram or Facebook when we get done tonight and check out some of the reels. They're absolutely awesome. If you're looking for a spade co, let me know. We'll get you turned on to Tim, and it'll help us both out. Um, 
Back to the uh, Lampses, real quick. Looking for a three weight rod, best rod and reel combo. Dan, Donald Lambert asked that. Donald, that's a tough, it, it's an open ended question because there's so many variables. I guess first and foremost would be what's your price point? I mean, that's that's that really is kind of the bottom line. What are you looking to spend? And then and then I can definitely give you an answer on what I would go with from there. Also, probably what type of water you're trying to fish and what species. But you get me the price, and I'll send you in the right direction, buddy. Also, Donald, where are you out of um, what city? And I know where uh, where to send you to get that. So that, those are our two reels. Um, when it comes, it's all scientific. Donald says, trout, you're a novice and in creeks. Um, creeks or Smoky Mountain creeks. And then what price point, buddy, and where are you located at? Well, this is our typical smallmouth and um, salmon and steelhead floating line. And it's a scientific angler frequency magnum line. All right, so Don says Kentucky. Looking for a three-way. I'll tell you, I, I would. there's no question. The, the, the sage light line is what I'd go with. Um, if you're not looking at a real cheap price point, sage light line is a phenomenal rod. I love that rod um, for trout. If you're only looking to fish trout with it, that's what I'd go with. Um, as far as Loomis goes, again, I don't know what price point you're looking at, but that IMX Pro is a phenomenal rod for the money. Um, and the beauty of Lampson is you pick the reel that you think looks nice and you like the porting of it and it feels good in your hand, and you go with that reel from Lampson. Um, all of their reels have the same drag system, so I'm not going to say, well, you've got to get a guru because that's got a better, better drag system. It doesn't. They've all got a great drag system. So with Lampson, pick what one you think looks cool. What one's available in the color you like, and uh, go with it. Ah, price point on the spade coat. Um, Joe, they're about, sorry, gosh, I keep forgetting to tell you guys prices. Um, spade coat is going to run you, and there are a lot of variables there because you can do a lot of crazy stuff, but typically between five and 600 bucks, somewhere in there. Um, I can save you a little bit of money probably if you call me and get it through us, but uh, um, they're going to be somewhere in that, in that area, a little bit less if you get it through us. Um, all right, so back to the frequency line. If we're, if we're using floating lines uh, for smallmouth, for trout, uh, steelhead, and salmon, that's what we're using, the frequency magnum. Price point on that is going to make you smile. It is a cheap line. You don't have to spend a ton of money on that line. Um, we're looking at like 29 bucks, I think they are. Where's my note? There it is. Nope, sorry. Frequency Magnum, 50 bucks. Yeah, $50 for that line. So nowadays, that's real cheap. Um, if we're fishing for trout subsurface, we're stripping streamers. We're using the Sonar Sink 25. That's a good sinking line. It's easy to cast. It's not clunky. Um, it's easy to handle. It's just an awesome stripping streamer line. If we're using a line for... Uh, musky and pike, and we're fishing subsurface. It's a sonar titan. We like the intermediate sink three, sink five. Another one I'll use sometimes is a sink five, sink uh, no, sorry, sink three, sink five, sink seven. So this is the front of the line is a sinking five. The next section is a sink three. The running line is an intermediate. That's really what that means. And the sink three, sink five, sink seven. We'll sink faster. That's really what that means. Throwing poppers for pike and musty, we're using the Mastery Titan. It's a floating line, and man, will that stuff load up and cast. It is a casting uh, line. Our spay lines, um, again, all scientific angler. I, I, let me go ahead and tell you the story why we switched to scientific angler. We switched to scientific angler the day we, st we announced we were in business. I had just literally put in an order for all Cortland lines and scientific angler called um, their head of uh, marketing was in, in South Bend at that time. He's like, what can we do to switch you over to SA? And I'm like, that's going to be tough because I literally just ordered all Cortland lines. And he says, well, 
write me up a wish list of you know what you ordered and what you'd like to have, and let's see what we can do. So I wrote him up literally every line we needed. And in 10 days, he called me and said, I need you to come out of the office. And he handed me every line we ordered for free. And from then, I switched to SA. And we have stuck with SA not because anything's free anymore. That doesn't happen anymore in this industry, hardly at all anyway. We stuck with SA because it is the best fly line out there. Customer service is great. The research and development is great. The fly lines last. And if they don't, you call SA and they make it right. Uh, to me, I'll hands down, the best fly lines on the market. Um, there's a little no, unknown fact about SA we'll talk about in a second. So our spin lines are, um, it, it's a third coast Skagit is what we're using. All of our spay lines are Skagit. Uh, some are floating, some are sinking intermediate lines, but they're all third coast Skagit. So one more thing about spay lines. They're not rated, although this one doesn't say anything, but they're not rated like an eight weight, a seven weight, a six weight. They're rated as grain weight. And almost all rods on the rod itself has a little, you know, 240 grain to, well, 220 grain to 280 grain, something like that. Most of our rods are 480 to 560. And you find that little window, all right? If you don't have it on your rod, type into Google uh, Skagit line chart. And, it, you know, rod, uh, spay rod line chart, something like that. And up will pop these charts. And it has Echo, it has Albright, it has every Corvus, Sage, Loomis, it has every rod company known to man, every series they've ever made, and it will tell you exactly what line you want on there. What I would suggest, when it gives you the green range, 270 to 330, what I would suggest is you go to the top. Don't go down. For most people, go to the top of that line on that chart. Charles asked, best way to clean lines. I use a scientific angler line. Um, that's what we use. That's the best thing to use on lines. Sure, you can do it with armor all. You can do it with uh, dish soap. You can do it with warm water. Um, SA stuff to me is is what I use. SA Coastal Express for big trout flies. Have use that line. Evan says trying to get my buddy into fly fishing. What would be the most cost effective combo for a six weight from Indianapolis? Smallmouth, hardmouth, panfish, trout. Yeah, I mean, Wolf Rod Company, a Lampson Liquid, an SA line. You can't beat that. Um, yeah. Um, as far as the rod goes, you're not going to find it. You're just not. I love the Lampson Liquid and then the SA line. Yeah. Get a high, get a, a frequency line for him. Um, He'll be able to do whatever he wants to with that. One thing I would probably question on there would be the six. Probably go with a five weight, Evan, on that. Um, is what I would probably do as a five. -weight. Use Skagit line to indicator fish for your customers' indie fish. So here's the deal with that. Yeah, if you're indicator fishing with a uh, Skagit line, then you've got to have a floating Skagit. We we indicator fish um, with our with. Our you got to have a floating Skagit line if you're going to indicator fish. If you're swinging on the big river, I use an intermediate. Um, yeah. This comes a custom cut tip. So what we buy is scientific angler. It's 30 feet. It's rated 14 T18. T12 is the lightest. It's going to sink the slowest. T18 is the heaviest. It's going to sink, sink even more. So we get a 30-foot section. And what we do is we cut those into two fives, two tens. So what that gives us, we have got now two five-foot sections. We've got two ten-foot sections. And if we need a 15, we just loop the two, and now we've got a 15. So that's kind of what we do. And we label everything. This is 15 feet of T18, 15 feet of T12, 10 foot of T12. And here's a trick. I don't know how well you can see these colors on here. But at the end of the day, if you're if you're fishing correctly, you're going to end up with use, you're going to end up using a lot of different tips, unless the water is super high. If the water is normal, depending on what hole you're fishing, you're going to be switching tips a lot. We tie not we tie loops into these tips with fly I mean with uh, tying thread, and so our T12s are tied in with white tying thread. 
Our T18s are tied in with red tying thread. Our T14s uh, are tied in with black tying thread. So then I never have to come home and try to figure out what is this, a T12, a T10. And it's, it's good to go. It's all right there. White, red, white. It's all right there. Black for T14. Um, yellow is T10 because we do have some T10s as well. So that's just a little trick for you for how we keep our tips straight. Uh, as far as leaders go, and this is the, my opinion, the biggest unknown secret about Scientific Angler, and that's their leaders in Tippet. Um, their leaders in Tippet are phenomenal. Um, you know, there were years where Jake and I would, and we could use, what was it, Jake Frogbutt Tippet or something like that for free out of the shop. I still took my SA stuff out and used it, even though I had to pay for it, because I just had confidence that it was that good. Um, so most of our stuff in trout, um, steelhead leaders are, are best. It's just got a heavier butt section, allows us to turn things over a little better. Um, tip it, we, we use a little monitor. We don't use any fluoro. Neither one of us are a big fan of fluoro. Everything we use is mono. And again, it's all scientific angler. Every line leader, tip it, and backing we've ever used is scientific angler. All right, split shot. We're getting down to those things that really can make a big difference. And so if we're an indicator fishing or we're high stick nymphing, we've got to get the flies down. Uh, and what we don't want is flies coming off all – I mean, I'm sorry, uh, split shot coming off all the time. And I've never found a better company than Water Gremlin for keeping the split shot on the leader. It does not fall off. The stuff, is, it stays where, it, where you put it. Um, so that's what we use, Water Gremlin. We carry these in size BB. Three out, sevens, and fives. We don't carry fours to be honest with you. Rod at all. Um, always water. And by water, we mean where the fish are in the water column and what depth the hole is and what speed the water is flowing at. Partially, maybe a little what fly we're using, but not so much. So I'll never forget a day. I don't know if Steve Preston's on here tonight. He's been on here every other night. Wave if you are, Steve. But I never forget a day where Preston and I went through a spot where we had, we had hooked like, I don't know, three or four steel the day before. And we swung through with a T18, which is what we used the day before. And we didn't get a touch. And I'm like, I know the fish didn't move. There was no reason for them to move. So we went back through. T18 got us down into the hole pretty deep. We went back through with a T10. So we were up pretty high. And we had five steel at each. We had just gone through down here. Nothing. Up here. You know there's fish in a hole. Don't hesitate to go back over it again. So, uh, dare I ask what you recommend for line setup for smallmouth 15 to 20 foot still water? Okay, so uh, I think you're looking at fish 15 to 20 feet depth wise, William. I'll come back to YouTube and take a look at what your answer is there. But if you're of depth, answer that now. The sinkers we use, they stay on the line. That's why we use them. Waiters. Um, we, Jake and I both are pretty, you know, again, if you'd asked us 15 years ago about Orvis, I'd have had a completely different answer about a lot of things Orvis. But, man, have they done a turnaround. Um, we bought our first pair of Orvis waiters about six years ago, maybe, Jake, something like that. Um, they are unbelievable. It's the I've worn in 20 years. It's uh, what Sims waiters used to be. Um, it, they, their customer service is second to none. I've not found a company other than maybe Cabela's, but I ordered a lot from Cabela's, um, that's better than Orbis when it comes to returns and, and repairs and taking care of their customers. Um, so we, we've been wearing Orbis waiters now for at least six years and have been super, super happy with those waiters. Um, they're, they're making really nice waiter. So if it's not too cold, this is what we're wearing is a boot, uh, stocking foot or the sweater. However, when it's super cold out middle of winter, and we want to keep our feet warm. We're, we're right back to neoprenes, um, boot foot neoprenes. The key with these isn't really from here up, although that's a, that'll keep you warm, but under breathable waders, you can dress and stay warm. Here's the key right here. It's these thousand denier plated boots. My feet don't get cold in the winter. And it's because of those. It's not because of socks. It's not because of 
foot warmers, it's because I've got boot foot waders on. So if you're looking to fish a lot in the winter, boot foot waders is the way to go. Probably, I've been loving, loving the Orvis, but I've been thinking about getting a Patagonia just so I could say, you know, yeah, they're great waders or no, nah, I didn't really like them. Because um, everybody I know that wears Patagonia waders is saying the same thing, Don, that they really like them. So that's good news. Uh, winter time, keep warm, man. I don't care how good the fishing is. If you're not warm, you're not catching fish. Throw some of these hand warmers in your pockets. Um, look, we all get ice on the guides in the winter. This is what we use to keep the ice off. You know, you can use Vaseline. You can use chapstick. You can use Stanley's ice off. The issue with those things, a couple different issues. Number one, they stick on the fly lines. They stick on your guides. Then they gum up your fly lines. Number two, with your fingers. Now your fingers are cold and covered in that stuff. It's good to go. I don't mess around with anything else. This is what we use to keep the ice off the guides. <coughs> as far as nets go, Frabel, um, I've got two Frables, one in each boat, and they're awesome. Jeff, the second. Uh, Don, Adam Martin just jumped on, and he's he's one of the Patagonia waiters right with you, and he loves them. Frabel nets is what we use for nets. Um, as far as vices go, I've had a Dynac Barracuda, which is this vice, for 23 years now. I've never even looked at getting anything repaired on it. Same jaws. It's the same, same everything for 23 years. I tie thousands upon thousands upon thousands of flies every year on this vice. I wish I had kept track of how many flies. But for 23 years, I've had zero problems. I would give Barracuda to anybody. You will not be disappointed. Now, price point is high. That's a negative with it. I think they're like 5, 528. Nice, but I've had it for 23 years. I've never had an issue. So it's been great for me. If you're looking more of an economical price point on the vice, um, I don't think you can beat the Griffin 1A. I just bought one for my son to tie on, like 50 bucks. And it, it holds a hook as well as the Dyna King does. Might not have the range, uh, might not be as, quite as easy to use. It's not rotary, but for a nine-year-old son to tie on, it has been a perfect vice. Um, and you know, for any beginner, or if you're an economical, you know, spender, if you don't have the money to put into a vice, this Griffin 1A, I don't think you'll be disappointed with it. We've really enjoyed that vice a lot. It's been really nice for him. Floating, I've used one floating forever, and that's it. Aquel, I don't see any reason to use anything else. Uh, it's phenomenal. As far as clothing goes, a couple other issues or a couple of other items, and I'm just going to name two from each of these companies. We use a lot of Patagonia. Yeah, Jake said, and I, I was going to get to that at the end. But let me save it for the end. Remind me if I don't say it, though, Jake. Um, so I was going to go into that. So Patagonia clothing. Um, they're baggy shorts, what I wear all summer. They're comfortable. You can swim in them. They've got a liner. They're awesome. They're Capoline every day. They're daily Capoline t-shirts. Phenomenal. Love them. And these things last forever. These shorts, literally, I have the same shorts from the year 2000. And I'm talking, I guided every day in those shorts. And I still have them. They haven't ripped out. They're a little faded after 20 years of being in the sun. But I can still wear them. My wife says they're a little small on me. So maybe the shorts have shrunk after 20 years. I don't know. I know I haven't gotten any bigger. But All right. Sims. Um, there are a few things I still use in Sims, but I'm going to be honest with you. Their waders and their rain jackets are not two of those things. 25 years or 20 years ago, every one of us would have had a pair of Sims waders. Um, I think everybody's kind of moved, not everybody, but most of the people I fished with have moved away from Sims waders. Um, I don't see the value in it anymore for their rain jackets, but I still wear their clothing. They make one thing about anybody's wading boots, go with laces. I can't stand those cranky things. I don't remember what they're called, boa maybe? I've got a pair with the boa. They're awful. Sand gets in them. You can't pull them out at the end of the day. And look, the worst thing you can do, they always tell you, well, you know, your laces don't freeze with those. Okay, so that means it's cold. So that means your hands are cold and the water in your boots is cold. And at the end of the day, when you go to pull them with that, Pull a thing that release out, and it won't come out because there's sand stuck in it, and your hands are freezing. You won't want a pair of those. If you ever get them on, 
and watch a video of how to repair those things if they break, you won't want to pair those. There's some things you just uh, French's mustard, um, milk chocolate, and shoelaces. Right? Don't try to get, don't try to better the shoelace. Work. Get boots with shoelaces. You won't be disappointed. I promise. The other thing I love from Sims is their cold weather pants. Um, yeah, laces are repair, replaceable. You can do it on the river in two minutes. Those boa things, those screws, literally have a tool. Take them apart in two different places to put the new line in. I, I'll never buy another pair of those. Um, I love their waiting boots still, but I'll never buy a pair of those. What was the name of the float tent? Um, Randall uh, Aquel. Aquel is the float and I use. That's not the only float that I use. I don't really play around with any other float. Um, I love this stuff. Sims cold weather pants. They are a great pant. They will keep you warm. They are durable. I've had a pair of these for probably eight years that I still wear. They're unbelievable. They're a great, great wading pant. All right, when it comes to hooks, um, we're using a lot of different types of hooks. When we're throwing a stinger hook on, we're throwing a hook on uh, to, to float beads with, we're using Gamakatsu octopus hooks. They're, they are sticky. They are durable. The hook point is good, and we do not lose fish on those suckers. So octopus hooks from Gamakatsu is one of our favorites. When it comes to fly boxes, we, I love these Montana Fly Company boat boxes. They're, they're just awesome. I love them. Waterproof. Um, look, the worst thing you can do is dunk that sucker and not know it, put it back in your vest or whatever for the next week or two, and then you pull it out and it's filled with a bunch of rust boxes, although I don't have them in this picture, is I hot glue kind of rust ease little plastic things in my box, and then that helps with moisture and keeping the rust out as well. Um, yeah, Adam Martin said, Jake says those things are nasty sharp. Yeah, they are. The uh, octopus, they're awesome. So Montana Fly Company, both, that's something we love. Uh, get these things, whether you make them or buy them, get some of these for when you're streamer fishing, especially if you're pike or musky fishing or even thinking about doing fishing. They're great for trout. They're great for smallmouth. It's just something to protect your finger, but it also allows that fly line to slide through your fingers a little easier when you're doing more delicate stripping like we are when we're uh, fishing smallmouth. Yeah, those things are, hey, those are a must. Those finger guards are a must. All right. <coughs> Back to what Jake brought up earlier. And that is, if you're going to buy it once, buy it once, not three times. What he means by that is spend the money now. Otherwise, you're going to buy something that is cheap and inexpensive. And then you're going to buy the next step up. And then you're finally going to buy something that is what you really wanted to begin with. Now, obviously, everybody has a budget they have to stay in. But if you can afford the best, buy the best. Now, that does not mean you have to spend $700 to get a good fly rod because you do not. Um, my opinion, look, we've been in the business long enough that I can remember our early rods that we, um, that we started with. And they were the Loomis, I want to say GL2 maybe they were called. I don't remember for sure. Um, my best rods at that time, most expensive, quote unquote, best rods at that time are no better than our entry level rods are now. Rod design has changed so much and vastly improved in 25 years that even at the low end of things, you get a rod that casts very, very well. But just a bunch of rods and if you fall in love with a $500 rod, if you can afford it, then that's the rod for you. Um, one of the best compliments my son gave me about fly fishing was, hopefully he didn't say the only thing he learned from me, but the one thing from me was that if I wanted to go fishing tomorrow and I had a rod rigged up in the boat that our clients were using today, I didn't. So, more expensive rods. They're all expensive nowadays. I use what we had rigged up for the client. Back to what Denton asked earlier. If you just change your casting stroke based on the rod. 
And once you become proficient at it, it doesn't matter what. It's the casting stroke. It's can you make the rod do the work? But like Jake said, I'll never forget Powell. It's, um, sorry, late 90s, early 2000s. And it said the Powell, the rod you'll eventually own anyway. And it made a lot of sense. So don't skip on a rod. Don't skip on anything. If you can afford it, get something that's going to hold up. It's going to work well for you. Um, spend what you need to spend because eventually if you buy a bunch of junk, number one, you'll be disappointed. And number two, you're probably going to end up spending more money down the road on the stuff you probably should back on my flies. Uh, John, that's going to depend on what species we're fishing for. To be honest with you, if I'm fishing trout, yeah, a lot of times I do. No, I don't. I don't pinch a lot of barbs. I really don't. Um, but if we're fishing trout and we're fishing small flies for smaller fish or big, we've been a lot of barbs back then. All right. Two nights, we've got to get back to it, and that is kids. These guys out on the water. So it's April 20 something. Second. Um, make a New Year's resolution because we you know you gave up on the one you made on April on, on January 1. You gave up on that a long time today. Everybody say we're gonna get it. Um, it's it will most a good point there. He says, uh, you are normally gonna break a rod. I mean, it's just gonna happen. So make sure you get a rod with a really good warranty. That's a good point. And make sure it's a rod company that back from rod company, which we had that before. Um, not with Loomis. Loomis is back to us. But uh, two and a half months to get a rod back is a long time. And I've had that happen. So make sure company you ask the rep, ask the fly shop you're going to buy it from. What's the, what's the warranty on this thing? Not only what's the warranty, how long can I expect you to get it back to me? This year, I'm going to get a kid. And I, there are a couple, 15 of them. I do have five. But, um, there's no I me mean, looking back at these pictures and their smiles. Those, those uh, cats, they double teamed that, that steelhead. That was awesome. And Nick there with a the small mouth. Look at Lucas, the little guy looking at that thing. Now, my kids, we were lucky, man. I, I got kids that, but she'll go and, and she'll watch and she, she enjoys as best she can. The rest of them love being on the water. Nick here, he was spoiled. He got the fish all over. He was he lived in Montana during the summers with us. This is on our pack trip up the state. with us for a couple of years in the summers. Uh, one great thing, though, about getting your kids to learn how to fish, less rowing time. That's a Bob Charles says, get with your local scout group and become a fishing merit badge counselor. Great time. That would be a good idea. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've never, my son was in scouts, and I don't remember. Oh, I know. The scout groups around here do that. They do their fishing merit badge, uh, Bob, at, uh, at camp during the summer. So that's already taken care of. That's why I've never thought about that. Yeah, because when my son went through it, I was just trying to remember where he got that. And they all go to camp um, and get it there at camp. Well, that's a great idea, though. But get your kids out fishing. Hey, there's no corona other than that one on the river. Um, I can't thank you enough. And this has been fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me switch it around over here so we can sit down and talk a bit. William, if you're on there, buddy, I never saw you. All right. So what questions do we have? We went through a lot of stuff. Um, there looks like a couple questions there, so let me get it back up. Do I ever use fly clips when fishing streamers or poppers? Um, no. I assume you're talking about the clips that you tie the leader onto and then it's kind of a snap. No, um, I don't. I uh, We just tie everything straight to the mono. 
Um, with streamers, typically I'm using a loop knot. Um, with poppers, I normally don't. Normally with poppers, I just use a, a clinch knot. Um, typically I use a loop knot when I'm fishing streamers for trout or smallmouth. And I use a loop knot when I'm fishing streamers for steelhead. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty much just throwing a, uh, a clinch knot on everything. Tom Martin, do you know when you will have a spay casting class this year? Man, I can't wait until I do know. I plan on having one in May. I'm just waiting, Tom, to see when everything opens up. Um, I'm waiting to see my kids' baseball schedule and if we're going to have any schedule. Um, I would assume we're supposed to be open May 1. Uh, my problem is Illinois looks like they're not opening until June 1 now. So I will probably um, do one in June, and I'll probably do another one in August or September. Um, but I don't know dates yet. But I, as soon as I do, I'll send an email out. So make sure you're on our email. We'll put it on our Facebook page too. Adam Martin says, what loop knot do we use? I'm going to be honest, Adam. I don't know the name of it. I know how to tie it, <laughs> I hope. Um, I don't know the name of it. I really don't. Um, it's a loop knot to me. I don't know. I really don't know the name of it. Mike Hill says, what brand of sunglasses? And I can't believe I forgot to put that in there. Uh, we have used Costas since day one. I think Jake has too since the first time, right, right when he started guiding. Um, Costas, literally for 21 years, that's all I've used. Love them. And in 21 years, I've gone through only maybe three or four pair. And uh, that's it. I mean, they, they're awesome. Jake and I both use glass lenses. I use amber with a green mirror. I don't, what do you use, Jake, on the lens? But yeah, we both use glass lenses. They don't scratch. Plastic lenses are going to scratch. Eric Robleski asked, do you still sell Ripple hats? Yes, I do. We've got tan, we've got blue, we've got orange, and we've got red Ripple Guide Service hats. So 15 bucks shipped if you want one. Um, let me know. But wait until tomorrow for some of you because that might be one of the prizes later. Jake said you, you just got a new pair this year. What did you what kind of lens did you get, Jake? With a green lens? Yeah, Craig says coastal glass is the way to go. It is. I amber and blue. Okay, I've got amber and green. So same color lens, it's just a different color coating. Um, yeah, Craig seconds the Costa thing. I mean, it's, it's all I've ever used. I love them and I, and I love their warranty. And, you know, I didn't mention that earlier. I'm glad Jake brought it up because warranty is huge. You're going to break stuff. I mean, it's just that simple. You are, you're going to break things. Um, and Costa has a great warranty. I've never had an issue with them. Never had an issue with Loomis. Never had an issue with Orbis. Um, I've had issues with Sims. I'll be honest with you. I've had issue with Sims warranty. It's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. Um, Lamson never had an issue. Spayco, we've never had anything break, so I don't know. I mean, we never had to deal with Tim, but I know Tim will take care of us. Um, but we never had anything break down with Spayco. Um, yeah, you know, warranties are huge because if you use it, you're going to break it. It's just that simple. If you use enough, you are going to break it. Oh, um, any other questions about any of this stuff? And I cannot believe I forgot to put glasses in there, and that's a huge part of it. Yes, Costa does prescription lenses, Kevin. For sure they do. Yeah, that's a huge part of it, and I can't believe I forgot to put that in there. Because if you can't see, you can't fish. Um, you know, it's just, it's, and I'm telling you guys, I have heard flies and split shot and lines and tippet and, and steel leaders hit glass over and over and over in my career. Um, and I shudder to think how many of those would have hit eyes if it hadn't been for the glasses there. Um, now I did have one. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I just worry about it. I mean, I, if you don't have glass there, um, all those would have ended up in somebody's eye or at least smacked the eye. I had one, one time I took my glasses off. I swear to God, I've only fished one time without glasses that I can remember. It was a late evening in the middle of summer. I was out smallmouth fishing and I just, it was late. I couldn't see real well. It was really windy. And I made a cast, and the fly came back and just grazed my eye. And then I went to the eye doctor the next day, and it missed my cornea by about an eighth of an inch, which is a long way on an eye, but it's close enough. 
Um, the wind had been blowing a little harder. I would have probably lost an eye. I mean, and that's the only time ever I fished without glasses. Uh, you've got to wear glasses. You just have to. It's a rule on my boat. You're not fishing without glasses on. Joe, Dustin, you're great. Uh, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, come up and see us for some pike, buddy. Oh, you'd love that. You'd love that. Oh, good. Yeah, Evan, if we're not tying our own flies, what fly manufacturers would you recommend? Um, a couple different ones. Um, the, the issue with that question is you really can't purchase through most of these manufacturers. It's a, they're wholesalers that sell to fly shops. Um, but there are, there, there's one, two, that I can tell you for sure that are very good. Uh, Wolf Rods, Dave Huff. Um, Tie some great pike and uh, uh, musky flies. Um, if you're looking for nymphs and eggs and things like that, uh, Dan Walker out of Michigan. Dan ties most of our eggs for us. It has for whew, at least 15 years. Um, Dan is a quick tire, and I would, I mean, his egg flies are phenomenal. He ties all of our eggs. I don't even mess with them. He does a great job. So Dave Huff at Wolf Rods ties wonderful pike and musky stuff. And uh, Dan Walker up in Michigan ties some great egg patterns. Um, but the rest of them, you know, most of the rest I tie, to be honest with you. Um, but all of our eggs are through Dave. And then the rest of them are through wholesalers. And you can't, you wouldn't be able to order through wholesalers. But, uh, you know, your fly shops can. Um, most of our flies, if we don't order them from Dave or from uh, Dan, or Greg Sauter, he ties a lot of our um, – well, I didn't want to mention Greg's name because I don't know how <laughs> – if Greg really wants to get into commercial tying. But Greg Sauter ties all of our hexes uh, and our headbangers and is a phenomenal tire with those. Um, so, Greg, I know you're on here if you want to do more comment. <laughs> um, but, you know, the other companies, uh, Holly Flies out of Pennsylvania, we get a few patterns from. Um, Hairline, we get a few patterns from. You know, they all do a nice job. Umpqua, it does a nice job. Uh, Rainey's does a nice job. They all do a nice job. It's just a matter of uh, price point and delivery for, for fly shops. All right, let me see. We had a couple more questions. Mark Mark says, what Loomis rod you said was your favorite that's not available? Um, it was the uh, short stick. So the Pro 4X uh, short stick, seven and a half foot uh, pike and musky rods that we use. We use the seven half foot nine tens. Uh, they're awesome, Mark. And we bought a bunch of them before they discontinued them because we figured they we would probably break them. Seeing how we're throwing big flies, we're throwing them in around the trees, we're smacking them up against the boats, we're figure eighting for musky. I've never broken one of those rods. I mean, so we've got a couple extras, but um, they're not for sale. <laughs> we've got a couple extras, but yeah, the Luma short sticks, they're awesome rods. Tyler, man, it'd be great to have you back up. Late fall, so we can salmon or steelhead fish. That'd be good, buddy. So if you're looking salmon, um, Kings, early October. I think we still have a couple dates open. I'm not positive on that. Um, if we if we have a dates open, it's only a couple of those. So if you're looking salmon for Kings, get with me soon. Uh, steelhead, late October, um, November is kind of the, the heart of the fall steelhead run. So, man, it'd be good to have you back up, buddy. For your nymph flies, is there a preferred size you tie? Um, well, I guess the preferred size is going to depend on, Kevin, what we're trying to imitate. So if we're imitating a hex nymph, we're probably throwing a size 6. If we're imitating a, a beta nymph, it's probably a size 18 or 16. Um, so it really depends on what we're trying to imitate is going to dictate what size nymph we're tying. So they really vary a lot. Uh, we've got everything from size fours to size 24s, probably, um, as far as nymphs go. So uh, nymph, you're really going to vary it on what you're trying to imitate and what size that bug is. Greg, I don't know if that thanks was for letting people know or letting them know you might not want to do that. <laughs> I don't know. But if you want to tie, let me know. I'm sure we've got some people that want to do it. <laughs> so if um, you know, I always say in my programs and seminars I do across the country at shops and clubs and whatever, and this is a whole new 
median for me, but this was fun, man. This was, um, you know, it's interesting. Every night I push the off buttons on here and I'm kind of depressed to be honest with you. It's, it's, uh, this has been a lot of fun for me. I hope it has been for you. I hope it's been enjoyable. I hope you learned a lot. Um, there's one thing about Jake and I, we both went to college to be teachers and, uh, we love to teach, man, and we might not be in a traditional class, high school classroom, but our classroom is the river, and it's a, it's got a little prettier view than the high school classroom, and uh, we love to teach, so don't hesitate to reach out, whether it's a message or email or text. I love phone calls because then we can kind of get into the nitty-gritty of what you're asking uh, without sending text back and forth or emails back and forth, so if you have time to call, that'd probably be the preferred thing, but um, you have any questions at all. Let me know. I'll help you however I can. Um, I was lucky enough in my younger years to have some great mentors in this sport. Um, two of them are on there tonight. Greg Sauter and Eric Robleski were great mentors to me when I was a young kid. I got into the fly fishing club here in South Bend when I was 19, I think I was. And a uh, young deadhead coming into a fly fishing club, which was uh, at that time at a upstairs of a bar, which was all filled with the uh, Cigar smoke was a fun place to be for a young kid. And, and those guys really, you know, nobody judged and they took me under their wings and showed me, um, you know, some, some really cool places and some really cool things that have changed my life. And to Greg and Eric that are on here and uh, Joe Mitchell, who's passed, and uh, Marshall uh, Jacobson and Mike Durdak and uh, some of those old timers, man, I, I don't know where I'd be as a fisherman without those mentors. And if I can be that to any of you, man, sign me up because I love to teach. So, um, and like Jake said, we're both still students. We both, we both, Jake probably more than me, I'll be honest, are very studious and, and, and we're not afraid to try new things and we're not afraid to fail at trying new things. Uh, if we're not trying new technologies, new flies, new lines, um, if we're not if we're not learning and going forward, we're going backward. And the fish are always always adapting. It's just that simple. Um, so yeah, the, we're still learning. We still learn all the time. Absolutely, we still try new techniques, new things, uh, different flies, different leader setups. Um, yeah. So let me see if there are any other questions. Guys, thank you. Thanks for your kind words. I'm so glad I could help. Um, like I said, if I can be of any help anymore, just let me know. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you. Um, from the bottom of my heart, you know, this has been a huge thing for me, too, just to be able to have some normalcy in my life and be able to talk some fishing with some good friends. And that's what this was all about for me and, and educate some new friends. So I'd be a little rough, but we're going to get through it. And I can't wait. You know, thanks for the last 21 years. And we're going to have 21 more coming up. Ah, William, did you? Oh, okay. William, give me a call or shoot me a text, buddy, and I'll I'll answer that question. Um, we can kind of get to the nitty gritty of what you're asking there because I wasn't real sure. Uh, give me a call, 574-993-7453. As soon as I sign off here, man, give me a call. Run upstairs and I'll get the answer for you. Thank you, guys. I'm glad it's been fun. I'll announce the winners tomorrow because there are, I think, six or seven. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I never thought I'd go back to e-learning. I never thought I'd get a chance to do that, not being a teacher like all the teachers are right now. But, yeah, it's uh, we're doing some e-learning. I love it. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And I'm so glad you're able to get in here and glad we were able to do this together.